So recently I made a video about the top five reasons why some people might not like and should not buy Diablo 4. This is going to be the opposite of that. As I said in that video, I personally had a really good experience in the beta as well as any previous iteration of the game I've played. I give it an 8 out of 10 and there's a lot of reasons for that. Some things that I enjoy, but also some things that some people may not even know about. So if you're interested in Diablo 4, here is the top five reasons that you might enjoy Diablo 4 and therefore you should buy it now. Now, I do want to mention one thing before we dive into it, and that is that we all are waiting for Diablo 4. We all are enjoying the game, presumably, if you're watching this video. And also, we all are interested in potentially learning more about the game. And so, although some of these things you may already know, I'm making the video because I am enjoying the game. I want to talk about the game, and I want to share my experience with as many people as possible. So, if you're that type of person, let me know in the comment section down below how much you are just dying to get into Diablo 4 again and how it's ruined all the other Diablo games for the time being because I definitely feel a little bit that way. So Diablo 4 has a little bit of everything to offer people that want to engage in the game, whether or not you enjoy the storyline, the actual gameplay, etc. But the first reason is going to be that storyline. The storyline is actually extremely engaging, coupled with the fact that the game actually looks extremely good. Uh, for an ARPG, this is arguably the best highest quality ARPG in terms of the graphical quality, as well as the storyline quality. The cutscenes are very very interesting to watch as well as the storylines interesting to follow you'll end up doing side quests that question what the heck did you even just witness i remember myself coming back and actually staring at certain quest objects because i'm like wait a second i was trying to just go through here for a little bit of map completion but i got sucked into the storyline it's actually really really interesting to listen to and the amount of you could say depression and dark themes in this game really start to weigh on you. So if you're into that sort of dark, interesting, grim lore, Diablo 4 is absolutely something you're going to pick up just to go through the storyline. Now, I know the storyline is not for everyone. And in fact, most people are going to be playing it for the ARPG mechanics. And one thing that's super important to know, I will not play a game that doesn't have smooth gameplay and what i mean by that is if i use a skill and i don't feel that feedback of me doing a lot of damage or potentially the um, animation slash sound feedback doesn't really match up etc then it is really disappointing to play diablo 4 is not that when you use an ability it feels effective even on the druid which you see behind me which i was playing a lot and the abilities like landslide absolutely feel good and do a lot of damage and everything that you're using in the game feels like it's going off quickly it usually does combo quite well and the animations as well as the sound effects really kind of give you that feedback that your abilities are impactful and instantaneous whereas you know you don't have many of these channeling moves or anything like that um, or you have cast times etc the game feels smooth and the combat feels smooth which is extremely important if you're basically going to be only playing it for the arpg mechanics because that's all you're going to be doing is killing monsters all the time this next point is the only overlap from my top five reasons why you should not buy Diablo 4, and that is the open world. As I mentioned in that video, this is an extremely, extremely polarizing topic. You either really enjoy it or you really hate it. On my side, I really enjoyed it. And so this is actually a reason why if you are someone who enjoys MMORPGs, this is about as close as you're gonna get to an ARPG crossing over with an MMO. So you can think of it as like an MMO ARPG, um, which is really, really cool because the open world is forced. There is no option out of it. If you're gonna do events in the open world, you are forced to potentially interact with other players if they're in the area. If you do a world boss, due to how the nature of the game is right now, we cannot enter the world boss with 12 people all together because there's no sort of party or raid grouping system. Therefore, when you enter there, you can have potentially four total people, including yourself, that you know, and then you're gonna have eight people that are just gonna be there regardless whether or not you know them or not. Uh, this is a really, really fun thing for me. I know there are some criticisms that even I have that uh, kind of make it a less enjoyable experience, but overall, nine times out of 10, I would want an open world experience with other players because at the end of the day, I'm an MMO player at heart and to have it in a Diablo game is just super, super fun to me. 
This next one are for those of you that might be a little bit of an altaholic. I know that I am certainly that oftentimes, and that is that the classes are distinctly unique. Um, a lot of the times when you're playing other games, for example, one of the games I've been playing recently, like Guild Wars 2, there are a lot of overlap between how certain classes play and how the abilities interact with each other, um, which isn't necessarily a super bad thing, um, but I know for myself, I really do like to mix up the gameplay and Diablo 4 certainly does that. I think each class is a distinct kind of advantage and a distinct disadvantage uh, just quickly going through them you know the rogue is the mobility god you're going to be hopping around everything really taking advantage of your fast mobility and comboing together your abilities the druid is going to be that slow moving sort of tank that also has a lot of options in terms of transforming themselves and specifically the druid you have so many unique abilities that make you really feel like you're doing something completely different even within the own class sorcerer is going to be that high damage glass cannon nuke that you're going to sit back relax and just nuke everything down the barbarian is going to be that really aggressive i have to get in the battle charge up and then use these massive abilities to launch or you know just potentially just get into the battle and then use that potential to translate into massive damaging abilities so it really is that barbarian type feel then of course you have the necromancer who is literally just a general uh if you want it to be a massive skeleton army can be at your side bigger than any other diablo game i've ever played honestly i was able to have i think potentially up to 15 different summons around me at a single time uh which was pretty crazy and they could be mages they could be warriors or they could be the golem which is pretty cool but you could also play the necromancer in its own sort of uh you know combo potential with you know blood mist and things like that that are already in the game so i feel like every class has their own distinct you know theme and that makes it really really nice for someone who wants to mix it up and play potentially different classes and progress on different classes and have a different gameplay experience so if you're that someone this is definitely going to have that experience that you're looking for lastly i think this is an important one and that is that the beta didn't really tell us much about the game now they have had end game betas in the past and i have participated in them um, however we really aren't allowed to share any information about the end game beta and even sites like for example um max Roll aren't allowed to share a lot of the information that goes around the end game of the game now we have had teasers we've had sharing um information and we've even had leaks right so it's not like a complete 100 we don't know anything but at the end of the day we really don't know how all the legendary aspects interact as we've seen recently we've only saw half of them in the codex in the beta and I think this is actually unique to Diablo 4 as of the recent games. You know, when we were considering Diablo Immortal, I knew everything going into Diablo Immortal just because they've had betas and they were able to share everything. When people play New World, a lot of people were able to get to max level and experience the game, right? Um, if we were playing all these other games that have been releasing lately, a lot of people have already experienced the entire game, shared everything, and we basically go into the game knowing everything that we need to do. In Diablo 4, it isn't quite like that. Um, there, we've only gotten to level 25 in terms of extensive testing with the recent open beta. And a lot of people really haven't even seen any of the legendary aspects in terms of the combo potential. And we haven't even experienced any of the end game content. And I think that's actually a really, really big advantage. If you're someone that hates the, you know, as people say, the the uh, new modernized MMO, everyone knows everything, there's no more mystery left. I think Diablo 4 will be surprisingly interesting in that aspect. Of course, as soon as you start entering the game and a week or two from now, everyone's gonna be max level and sharing all their information. Uh, so if you want to get that kind of mysterious experience without anything being spoiled or um, you know, kind of already known about, you're gonna wanna buy the game now and enter immediately as soon as that game launches June 6th. And a little bonus one for you all. The game projects itself not to be a pay to win. I wanted to say this one because um, a lot of the times, a lot of the games recently do have that, oh, is it going to be pay to win? As far as we've seen, as far as I've seen, as far as anything that the developers have said, the game will not be pay to win in a pay to win aspect like Diablo Immortal. They may have a similar paying kind of mechanics as Path of Exile, although a lot of people are okay with that. And the other thing is that if you're going to buy the game now, there is a four day early access if you buy the deluxe edition, which is, I believe, $20 more. And so some people consider that pay to win, although um, I don't know, I don't really see it that way. But if you are super excited about the game, 
and you're like me, you've already purchased the deluxe edition so you can get the game early, four days early than the average player. So again, if you any of these reasons are appealing to you or you already knew about all these things and you just really, really are excited about Diablo 4, definitely pick up that deluxe edition and jump into the game. I'm super excited about it. Again, I'm continuing to make Diablo 4 videos just because I love the game. I'm really enjoying um, talking about it and just watching everything. Even if it's something I've already seen before or heard before, I don't even care because I'm just that excited about it. Let me know if you guys are feeling the same way. Also, if you guys cannot wait for Diablo 4 to release, I'll see you all for the next one.